we're back today with MIDI sequencing tips from Tom. Today we're going to talk about mixing in Logic Pro. Um, a lot of people think with all these unlimited plugins we have that it's a mix when you get a compressor, an EQ, and a reverb on every track. It must be mixed. We've used everything. Um, anecdotally, I used to get these mixes over the years from students mixing in Logic, and they tended to be kind of washy and indistinct. Well, now that I'm using Logic, today I called up their Cinema Template. Their Cinema Template loads with eight complete auxiliary sends and separate reverb pro programs. Wow, eight? Really? Um, I've mixed a lot of records, and I seldom use more than three separate reverb programs, especially not in Cinema stuff. Um, a project like this, we're going to take a look at our Casablanca project like this. This is a small group jazz thing. I would typically only use two reverbs on this project. In MIDI synthesis, um, particularly when you're trying to create a feeling of a cinema film score, what you're trying to do is make it appear as if all the instruments were recorded in the same sound stage at the same time. Putting each instrument in its own particular space fights against that. Again, we're trying to create the ambience or the feeling that it was all recorded at the same time. All right, let's go to logic. All right, first thing we need to talk about today is the difference between insert processing and effects loop processing. So let's start by addressing the snare. If we wanted some reverb on the snare, we could go into our um, effects here. Take a reverb, let's try the chroma verb. Call up a program here. So now we've got some reverb on our snare drum here. This is an acceptable way to go. Control would be uh, organized here by the relationship of dry to wet. Now, but if I wanted to put this drum reverb on all of my drum tracks, I would have to insert a reverb on every track. It's uh, inefficient. The better way to go about this, we'll take this off for now, would be to do this in an effects loop manner. So we're going to go to sends here, we're going to take this snare track, and we're going to bus it out to bus 1. You notice, as I create bus 1 here, I automatically create an aux return track. So now the snare is being bussed to this aux track, and the output of the reverb plugin is being added back into the mix. So the snare track is not going through it, it's being bussed to it. All right, so now we've set up an effects loop processing signal path. We need to come over here and we need to put a plug-in, a reverb plug-in, on our first um, auxiliary return track. Uh, Logic boasts a couple of really excellent reverb programs. Let's take a look at Chromaverb. Chromaverb is an algorithmic reverb. It's based on a number of really, really short delays. Um, a lot of the classic digital reverbs um, of the 80s and 90s, the Lexicons 224 and 480L, were algorithmic reverbs. So we're going to set this up on aux 1, and we're going to pick a patch. Let's go down here and say room, large room. Now, we need to go into our mix window. And we need to take our send from our snare. Now, you say, why did I pick a room reverb? For percussion instruments, room reverbs tend to work very well. They become part of the sound as opposed to being obviously reverb. So they can create some space without being obvious that you have a bunch of reverb on it. Now, the other nice thing about setting it up like this in an effects loop processing is I can go into the rest of my drum tracks and send them to the same bus. I 
And again, we're trying to create the illusion that they're all in the same space. Go take a look at our plugin again, and we're going to bring the decay time or RT60 up a little bit. In essence, raising the size of the room. Now, the other thing you should notice is that if we go to our main page. There is none of the dry signal. We are getting only 100% of the wet signal. Again, because this is being added in to the stereo bus, to the mix, on its own. Okay, we're going to move on to our piano. Pianos tend to work better with reverbs like a plate. A plate is an emulation of an EMT. It tends to be a highly diffuse kind of or, um, has a high diffusion, um, meaning it, it's a very um, kind of a thick reverb. They tend to work well on vocals. They tend to work well on things like piano. So we're going to go to our piano track here and pick a second bus, bus two. Now you notice it creates another auxiliary return track. And we're going to go over here and assign a reverb program. Uh, Logic also has a program, a reverb program called Space Designer. Space Designer is fundamentally different than Chromaverb because it is a convolution reverb program. It is b based on uh, impulse responses from actual um, reverb, reverberant areas or reverberant devices. So uh, we're going to pick a plate here. Let's go over here. Large spaces, plate reverb, and let's pick this 3.6 second percussion plate. The thing about convolution reverbs is you can always make them shorter, but you cannot make them longer. So let's go over here, turn up bus 2 a little bit, hit play. So let's bring back our RT60 a little. And we're going to back off our filter to make it a little bit brighter. Now, we can go up here and we can add this to all our different piano tracks. Another thing to be aware of is if you notice, there we, we don't have EQ and compression on all these tracks. There's some compression on the bass. Seems to increase the realism a little bit. And we have a little compression and EQ on our guitar. I wanted to talk about one more thing while we're talking about mixing and logic. Uh, if we open up our movie window and we play the track, you'll notice that the track needs to fade out here at the end of the second uh, eight bar phrase. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the band and we're going to assign them to a VCA fader. All right, let's go up here, view, channel strip components, VCA, and we'll open up a series of VCA windows here. New VCA fader, VCA one, and we're going to assign our band here, not our sound effects, to a VCA group. And now if we play this, you'll 
you'll notice that the band is now controlled by the VCA fader. So let's add our sound effects and stuff in. So we're going to write a little automation here on our VCA fader so that we can automate the fade out. We're going to wrap up today's tutorial with a little discussion about bouncing out to movie. But there are two little things I wanted to touch on. The first one was the difference between a balance knob, talking about the pans. Pan, the default is a balance knob, but if we click on it, right click on it, we can go to a stereo pan, which allows us to separately set the placement of the left and right signals. So we could create uh, stereo issues that were partly to the right or partly to the left. All right, the second thing I want to briefly touch on is the auxiliary sends. Auxiliary sends, if you right click them, auxiliary sends can be post pan, post fader, or pre fader. Typically, in a situation like this where the auxiliary sends are being used for reverb, you want them to be post fader or post pan so that they follow the level of the signal. Now, we're all done here. Our project is great. We want to bounce this out to movie. So we go to our main window. We're going to select the entire project. We're going to go under File, Movie, Export Audio to Movie. Comes up with this dialog box. We need to give it a name. We'll call it 2020 Logic Mix. Uh, linear PCM, you can also use AAC or Apple lossless codecs, but because we're audio people, we're going to use, use linear PCM uncompressed. Sample rate is the same as the project, 48K, and bit depth, let's go ahead and make this 24 bits. Now, I'm going to click Save, and it's going to ask me, do you want to include the audio from the original project, from the movie? Well, yes, that's my sound effect, so I'm going to click Enabled and click OK. It will go through the bouncing process. Then it will essentially compile the movie. And I'll have it here in my folder.